Rashmi Palashiri. I am assistant professor in the Department of Medical Oncology, Hematology and Bone Marrow Transplant at Ramaya Medical College. I am also a consultant pediatric oncologist, hematologist and a bone marrow transplant physician at the HCG MSR Cancer Center in Ramaya Memorial Hospital. I did my pediatric training after my MBBS from India at the Texas Tech University in um, Texas, US, followed by a three-year fellowship in pediatric hematology and oncology at the Case Western Reserve University Rainbow Babies and Children's Hospital. After that, I joined Ramaya Medical College as a faculty in 2017. And um, since the inception of the bone marrow transplant center here, we have done so far 125 bone marrow transplant, which is the maximum number of transplants that a medical college has done in Karnataka. The purpose of this video is to give you a broad overview on bone marrow transplantation, the procedure and its use in the treatment of various illnesses. Bone marrow transplantation is also called hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. The basis of this treatment is that a patient who has issues or illnesses arising from the bone marrow undergoes a treatment whereby the unhealthy bone marrow is removed and healthy stem cells that will produce the normal cells in the blood is given from a donor that goes inside the patient and grows to create a healthy marrow. Now, there are a wide range of diseases for which bone marrow transplantation can be a curative therapy. Most of these diseases are life-threatening and if bone marrow transplant is not given as a curative therapy, these patients will not be able to live longer and live a healthy life. Broadly, these diseases can be divided into non-malignant or benign disorders and then malignant disorders. So the malignant disorders are basically cancers that arise from the bone marrow, specifically leukemias and certain type of lymphomas where the cancers arise from the lymph nodes. The incidence of malignancies in children are steadily on a rise. Children don't get cancers as much as adults do, but there is an increase that we have witnessed over the last 10 to 20 years. And hence, the use of bone marrow transplant as a cure for a lot of these childhood malignancies is also on the rise. The second type of disorders for which bone marrow transplantation is used are non-malignant or benign disorders. These are diseases where either the red cells that carry the hemoglobin are affected due to some inherited problems because of which the hemoglobin will be very low. Patient will develop anemia and will require lifelong transfusions without which they cannot survive. A common indication in this category is thalassemia. Thalassemia is a disease where children are born with defect in their red blood cells because of which within months of birth they will start requiring blood transfusions and unless you give them healthy stem cells that produce normal red cells the disease will not get cured as of now there are gene therapy trials that are being um, tested for these kind of disorders but for now the curative treatment for thalassemias which come under a category of disorders called hemoglobinopathies are bone marrow transplant another common disease group for which children undergo bone marrow transplant in the non-malignant category are immunodeficiencies. Here the problem is with the white cells in a child. The white cells or the white blood cells are the ones that form your immune system. So due to either due to most of the time an inherited problem, children will have a defective immune system. Our immune system is what protects us against all um, infections and with the defective immune system these children have a less capability of fighting infections and can succumb to minor infections also in this situation also a healthy stem cell from a donor can grow and produce normal white cells in the patient and thereby cure the immunodeficiency there are even rarer conditions called storage disorders for which bone marrow transplant is curative this is because um, certain cells that are defective in these storage disorders have their origin from the hematopoietic stem cells or the mother cells in the bone marrow that eventually make the uh, blood cells. So by doing a transplant from a healthy donor, these mother cells are becoming healthy thereby curing the disease. 
the crux of majority of these um, benign disorders for bone marrow transplant is that the best outcome for these disorders happen when the bone marrow transplantation is done as early as possible soon after the disease diagnosis before the disease starts producing other harmful effects on the body. When we talk about bone marrow transplants, there are two types. There is allogenic transplant and autologous transplant. What we are going to talk about here more is allogenic transplant. in which case the stem cells are actually procured from a healthy donor and not from yourself because the disease that we are targeting here is actually a disease of the stem cell of the patient so there's no point in giving the stem cells of the patient back what we need is healthy stem cells from a donor so where do we get these um, healthy stem cells so stem cells typically reside inside our bone marrow the blood stem cells there will be a very small percentage of them that will go in the uh, blood circulation as well so um, when we actually look at getting an allogenic donor for doing an allogenic bone marrow transplant, we have to look at something called an HLA match. So HLA match basically is like matching the address of the cell of the patient to that of the donor. Um, they are these proteins that give a, uh, you know, a particular individualistic signature to each cell and ideally if you have a full HLA match with your donor, the, that transplant is what we call a full matched transplant and the outcomes are always better than going for an um, unmatched transplant. So in the full matched transplant category, typically what we do when a patient requires a bone marrow transplant is we check the brother and sister to see if they are a full HLA match to the patient. And the possibility is about 20% that any of your sibling can be a full match. So as you can imagine, the possibility is not very good. So when you don't have a full match within the family, then your next option is to look for a full match donor from what we call a donor registry. So donor registries um, carry typically individuals who have registered themselves as um, stem cell donors. Um, their HLA details will be stored. When you upload your patient's HLA details, they will find a match and intimate you. And then you basically um, request the voluntary donor to uh, donate stem cells, which will be uh, frozen and sent back to your center where you will give it to your patient. Another source of stem cell other than the bone marrow or the peripheral blood is actually the umbilical cord blood. Now umbilical cord is basically that connection that uh, that is there when the baby is inside the uterus from the baby's umbilicus to the mother's placenta and it is rich in stem cells. So typically after birth the umbilical cord along with the placenta is rejected. Whereas in countries that do cord blood banking with the parent's consent this umbilical cord can be donated to a cord blood bank a community cord blood bank where it will be preserved and stored after doing the HLA typing for future use when a patient needs a bone marrow transplant and there is no HLA matched donor within the family they can basically approach a cord cord bank check and see if there is an HLA match in any of the cord blood cells and request that cord to be uh, given to the patient so in this case, uh, one factor that is not there in a regular donor registry is that you don't need an alive donor who then has to consent. You already have stem cells stored in the cord blood bank. Now um, the cord blood stem cells are a little bit different from actually the stem cells that you get in um, from the bone marrow or from the peripheral blood. And um, in Western countries uh, where cord blood banking is done routinely and there is a large source of stem cells of all HLA types in the cord blood bank, there are diseases for which cord blood, cord blood stem cells are preferred over others, other stem cells derived from bone marrow or from the peripheral blood. This is because the stem cells that are there in the inside the umbilical cord are very naive or very young stem cells that particularly will cause decreased incidence of a post-transplant complication called GVHD or graft versus host disease. Cord blood banking in India is still sort of in its infancy. What we have are a larger number of private cord blood banks where 
uh, when a baby is born the parents can elect to choose um, the services of this private cord blood banks where the baby's uh, cord blood is stored however when you talk about an allogeneic transplant what we need is not your own stem cells so the way to go in our setup is actually to go for community cord blood banking where um, as the baby is born and the parents give consent for storage of the umbilical cord stem cells the stem cells are collected hla typed and preserved and then the stem cell pool that is actually derived indigenously like with indian donors is actually um, available to the general public or whoever who has registered with the community cord blood bank at a later time if need arises the advantage again is that you have already stem cells cryopreserved you don't need a live donor to consent and do the process again there is um, less cost involved because the stem cell collection and preservation is already done and the third is that um, a lot of these um, community cord blood banks can actually provide some sort of treatment assistance to the patients who end up requiring a bone marrow transplant using cord blood stem cells As a hematologist and a bone marrow transplant physician, um, what I would say to expectant couples and to obstetricians who counsel these couples in terms of cord blood banking is, yes, cord blood derived stem cells are a good choice um, to use as a graft in bone marrow transplantation. And the ideal way to go about it is to do a community based cord blood banking, thus contributing to improving the pool of um, indigenous stem cell grafts within our community.